My father once sat me down and explained to me that life can be wonderful unless you're stupid. Last week, I made a video explaining how to scan for tones using a Wuxin radio and many other brand radios. It's very, very easy to do. But if you are one of the over 500 million very proud owners of a Boofwang UV5R radio, none of that would work. You can't do it that way. So in this video, I'm going to explain step-by-step step how to scan for tones, repeater tones, privacy tones, codes, whatever you want to call them, how to scan them from the thin air using your Boofwang UV5R. Now, I didn't even know that you could do tone scanning on a Baofeng UV5R, but on that previous video, a viewer, James C, left a comment explaining how to do it, proving once again what I have said hundreds of times, never believe or trust anything you see in YouTube comments, because James C, as much as I appreciate it, you are close but you got it wrong. You missed several very important steps. So I did something that most YouTube viewers are apparently completely incapable of doing. I downloaded the manual for the Baofeng UV5R and I spent two minutes reading it so that I could see the right way to do tone scanning on a UV5R radio. And now I'm going to share that sacred knowledge with you my favorite viewer. For demonstration, I will be using my new, brand new Boofwang UV5R radio. I have never even transmitted on this radio because it is a ham radio and I do not have a ham radio license. And if I were to press this transmit button right here, every sad ham on the internet would start crying. Have you ever seen a sad ham cry? It's gross. And we don't want to see any sad hams cry, do we? For transmitting to the UV5R, which I will be using to scan for the tones, for transmitting with the tones, I will be using my Boofwang UV9G GMRS radio, which is perfectly legal for me to use. There is no reason for any sad hams to cry because of course I do have a GMRS license. Why the sad hams would care about someone transmitting in GMRS bands, I have no idea, but if you're a ham radio operator and you get upset or sad when people transmit on GMRS frequencies with the wrong radio, you might be a sad ham. So for clarification, I will be using the UV9G GMRS radio with a tone set, a CTCSS tone set for transmitting. I will be using the Boofwang UV5R for receiving said tones and scanning them, thusly showing you how to successfully scan for a tone. So here are the steps. Using my new Boofwang UV5R, so new, I haven't even peeled the cover off yet. First, very importantly, the radio must be in VFO mode. That means not in channel mode. If you're not sure which mode your radio is in, it's usually easy to tell because you'll see a channel name listed instead of a frequency. You can press the big orange VFO memory button to switch between VFO and channel mode, and the nice Boofwang lady will tell you what mode you're in. Frequency mode. I'm now in frequency mode. Channel mode. I'm now in channel mode. Frequency mode. So as mentioned, we must be in frequency mode. This will not work if you're in channel mode. We then go into the menu, menu. and we select either the CTCSS or DCS option. Now, when you're scanning for tones, the tones, we don't know what the tones are. They could be CTCSS tones or they could be DCS tones. So the way it works is you pick one at random, CTCS or DCS tones, and then you scan through them. If you don't find the tone, then you go to the other option and scan through them. So I'm gonna scan through the CTCSS tones first. If it doesn't find the tone, I will then switch to DCS tones and scan through them. The menu option, for CTCSS tones is 11. That is the receiving CTCS tone. That means I will be listening for those tones. Receiving DCS tones would be option 10, but I'm gonna start on CTCS tones. So I'm gonna to go to menu option 11. You then hit menu again. This puts you into, to allow you to edit that option. 
And the very important step that was missed by Mr. James C. is that you must set an arbitrary tone. Any tone, it doesn't matter. A tone has to be in there or it won't work. It sounds stupid, but that's the way it must be. So I go in, I hit menu again so that I can change it from off to anything. I just hit the down arrow button once and randomly selected 254.1. I hit menu again to save that option. You can now see here that a CTCS tone is set. So now to scan, now that I have enabled a random CTCSS tone, doesn't matter what that tone was, I can now use my other radio to transmit with a tone and I will scan using the Boofwang radio to see what that tone is. And to do that, I must be in the menu options. I must select menu 11, which I've already done here. I select menu again so that it's in edit mode. And now I tap the scan key or the star button. And you'll see now the magic is beginning to happen it is now scanning as indicated by that flashing CT. So now when I transmit with this radio with a tone, you will see it scan through. And there it is. It found the tone. 183.5. I could then write that down or save it and program it into my radio to transmit using that tone. If it didn't find the CTCSS tone, I would do the same thing. I would go in back to menu 11, I would remove the random tone that I put in and save it. I would then go to the RDCS option and do the same thing. I would set a random tone and save it. I would then hit menu again. I would then hold the scan key for just a moment, just tap it and the magic would begin again. You see it flashing and it would then begin scanning it's not going to find anything this time because I have a CTCSS tone and I'm scanning for DCS. Once you have the tone, as I mentioned, you write it down or save it. You might have to go back into channel mode and edit the channel that you want to save it on, but you now know what that tone is. And that, my friends, is how you scan for a tone using your Boofwang UV5R radio. Now, before I forget, earlier when I pressed the sad ham crying button, the radio was not turned on. So you do not need to fear that I was violating any FCC rules or regulations. Rules and regulations, not laws. But I didn't violate any of them because there was no power. There was no electricities running through the radio. If you want to know how many sad hams began to cry about that anyway, just read the comments below. If you have any questions about why stupid people leave comments on YouTube videos, leave a comment below.